Marg Margaret Coleman's going to speak now on behalf of um, Genealogical Society of Queensland. She's been involved in family history for five years. So she's probably got experience that's closer to what some of you have. But her family's been in Australia since the late 1800s. She's looking for something juicy in her family. She was mentioning murder too, which is a bit, bit of a worry. She's vice president of GSQ. Uh, GSQ is the oldest uh, society in Queensland. And so it's one that you would definitely want to know about. Margaret Coleman. Thank you, Stephanie. Good morning. Can everybody hear me okay? I better put my glasses on so I can see. I might be young, to, uh, but my eyes are wearing out. Um, Pauline Williams was to do this talk this morning, but unfortunately she's lost her voice, so I've stepped in at the last minute using her notes. Now, as Stephanie said, we were formed in 1978 as a non-political, non-sectarian and non-profit organisation, and we are purely volunteer organisations, just like the former group that just spoke. Um, our main library resource centre is in 38 Fisher Street, and we have branches North Brisbane, Bow Desert, uh, Redlands, Wynnum, Upper Mount Cravat, and we have interest groups based on localities and special interests. Um, there's a little photo down the bottom there. We're the only commercial building in Fisher Street, so it's easy to pick. And on this slide is, we're very proud, we've just won an award um, for best website, uh, encouragement excellence, encouraging excellence in family history websites, annual awards for the best genealogical website of 2011. We got second place. New Zealand just beat us out, but that's the way it goes. And uh, we're very proud that's issued by the Family Federation of Family History Societies in the UK. So um, one of our volunteers was mainly, you know, playing around with that for a while, and we're quite proud of what we've got there now. So if you like to go and have a look, please do. We understand we're the largest library of genealogical and family history materials in Queensland. Many items are unique to GSQ. Uh, our Q150 muster roll, which I'll speak of a little later. Uh, funeral directors, cemetery records, Catholic parish registers, subscriptions to major online sites, Scottish parish registered groups, sorry, and special interest groups at Convict Connections and Colonial Australia, and of course our winning website. Well, our extensive library holdings, um, just to give you a bit of an idea of what you can look through, is 7,500 books, 750 CDs, 1,250 maps, 150 microfilms, and 2,700 microfish. And we're adding to that um, as we have all the funeral directors after was 30 years, the more come online so that we can update our records and have them in our uh, library. Um, the holdings unique to GSQ was just the funeral directors, which I uh, mentioned, the Catholic parish records. Um, Queensland muster roll data is 3,600 unrelated certificates. Some people who have purchased certificates in the past and have found, no, that's not my family, and what will I do with these certificates? Oh, I've pushed it something. Mark, what have I done? I'll let Stephanie fiddle with that while I keep talking. Um, the, um, it's back again. And 3,800 pedigree charts, people have given their pedigrees. And also in our library, we have hundreds of um, family history rights. A lot of people say, oh, I've done all this, now I'm going to put it in writing, which they do when they publish a book. And they've donated a copy of their book to us to put in our library. So it's always good to go through that section to have a look that somebody else might have written something about your family or part of what you're searching for in there. Now, in 
1988, the Bicentennial Project, approximately 2,000 forms were submitted. We called for our, volunteer, our members to give um, information on their forefathers and foremothers that came out here from becoming a colony, 1859, to becoming a state, 1901. Now, the original forms are available to search there. Um, and during the Q150, the electronic database was started as a project. And we've got new and updated entries, which we're just coming to the end of completing. I think we got about another 8,000. So I've got about 28,000 people and it's an ongoing pro project. Now we put out a publication which you can have a look at out at our desk outside, Queensland Pioneer Families. It's a little snippets of some of the stories that people submitted to us and we put in a book. Now there's only about uh, a few hundred there. We have many more and we're looking at bringing out a CD or another book with some more of these stories that people have submitted on their parents. So these are the ordinary folk that help make Queensland what it is today. The Master Roll Data, Volumes 1 and 2 CDs we are bringing out. Now, there we are. This is the famous green form. Uh, give you an idea of what people submitted to us. The subject's name, etc., and the, with what some names being Scandinavian or Danish or German, we to make sure we knew which was the, uh, whether they're female or male, we asked for that information. Some people said, why do you want to know that? Well, we don't know because I don't understand German. So, but then it also went on down who their parents were. And then on the reverse of the uh, form, the spouse details there, the marriage details, death, where, where they were buried, um, and then the list of the children, how many, you know, some stillborn, some uh, died very young, etc. So we've got a glint into what was happening there of a family. The other thing is the funeral directors and cemetery records. Uh, to the unique record sets drawn from throughout the state of Queensland. Index and original records currently available at GSQ and we have a few left after Expo that was held out at Jindalee. We've only got a few of those CDs available at the moment but there are some out there but I'm sure you can get in touch with GSQ and place an order. Um, Sorry, uh, index and original records currently available at GSQ, but all data recently revalidated in preparation for online access. Uh, the index includes the surname, given name, age, date, entry number, place and event. And this is what we're available. We're going through, it's a lot of records, 428,307. I won't run through them all, but the the total um, in all is, that's the burial registers and the grand total for funerals is 565,642. So a lot of people have passed through Queensland over the years. Now, as you might have noticed, there's um, Alex Gow, Cannon and Cripps, KM Smith, Metropolitan, John Hislop, that's being worked on, Legrand and Beaudesert, Bean Lee, I won't pronounce, Lorish, I think it's pronounced, T.T. Uh, Corns of Rockhampton and Tucker and Nankerville Mount Morgan. Now, we've got some notes outside, so if you didn't miss writing them all down, uh, you can get some of the notes outside. And this is a typical funeral director's record of a burial on Colin Alexander Trinder, 1920. So it gives you an idea what was thought uh, essential to write down. If you like to just sort of browse through that a little. And um, the next one shows what the records are like from November 69. That's um, a bit of a quick look at there. Again, basically the same, but set out differently with a bit more. And this one includes the cost of the funerals. This one came to, um, oh, can't read it. Oh, there are 80, 80 pounds, 
No, 69 will be $80.60. That's got to be wrong. Surely not. The Catholic Parish Register Index. We've been permitted by the um, Catholic uh, Church to be allowed to film and index the parish registers, primarily, primarily in southeast Queensland. And it's an ongoing project to film and index these registers. We've got access to baptisms, confirmations, marriages and burials. <clears throat> Pardon me. And some of these records are valuable as substitute for Queensland certificates of death, etc. The Roman Catholic Church will not allow copies of actual filmed entries, um, a general viewing of records, and we can provide some transcripts of events for a small fee. This is a sample from uh, the index, the Gatton Baptisms, the date, the name, what page, and then uh, the fish numbers our, over at our office, what we photograph. Now, this one is from um, the baptism from St Mary's Roman Catholic Church at Gatton. So we've got that and that gives a lot of information for you uh, where they were born, the father, the mother, where they lived and the sponsors and the minister. So Genevieve is there. And then the marriages. This is a sample of a marriage, again, from the Catholic Church at Gatton. Mr O'Connor, a bachelor and a farmer. And his father was a farmer. And uh, he married Bridget from um, Malton, New South Wales. And she was a dressmaker, a lot of dressmakers back in those days, um, etc. there. And a burial from St Stephen's in, in Brisbane here. Again, similar things, but this little child of three months, which was quite common back in those days. Big families, but... When you read through, I've been doing verification on these forms, etc., that I was talking about before, and it's sort of, I get involved in the family and you get a bit sad, you read that, you know, one child, the next one died after three months or eight, maybe, you know, a toddler or something. And sometimes in the stories they might have um, the three-year-old child crawled into a fire, uh, yeah, the fire and, caught, you know, was burnt and did, didn't recover from the burns and I sort of sit there and get get back to the job and stop getting involved but that's what family history is all about for me is not just the dates it's the people that were concerned um, in addition to our printed library we have through on our computers subscriptions to the following websites ancestry worldwide find my past UK Australia and Pacific and Ireland the Genealogist, Family Relatives and British Newspaper Archives and our network computer system uh, to enable, where permitted by licence, multiple use of CD resources as well. Uh, we're finding that we're looking now more for doing this to help our members instead of having to pay subscriptions to them, you know, a couple of hundred dollars per subscription, we do that and it's as many times as you like to come in and uh, use it if you remember. Our interest groups, oh sorry, oh I didn't click the button. Uh, we meet Sundays for our interest groups, it's the only day we have available um, at Fisher Street and the geographical areas covered are English, Irish and Welsh, German, Scandinavian, Scottish and interest areas Convict and Colonial Connections, Computing, we have Legacy and Family Tree Maker Groups, Photo Restoration and Writing Your Family Story, which has become the big thing of the day, which I'd love to do, but, I, but anyhow, well, that's my next. What do the interest groups do? Well, they have guest speakers, they have classes, they have seminars, they have discussions with experienced researchers to help overcome brick walls. I'm sure a lot of you have come against those brick walls. I had one with my German connection. I couldn't find where they came into Australia and Dr Jennifer Harrison was talking at one of our seminars and she asked 
us to supply some information on people that, and I put my hand up and she found out through all her research over the years and knowledge that they would have been on a ship that sank and that's why there's no log of that. So interesting times, interesting facts and events that we find out. Full access to all resources at Fisher Street research, transcription, publication of resources, newsletters and purchase of new resources. There's always books coming out, CDs coming out. Uh, you can get a bit bamboozled, but there's plenty of things to do. Now, another one, we have the Scottish Old Parish Records. The original registers held by the National Records of Scotland in Edinburgh, they, those include births and baptisms, proclamation of the bans or the marriage or both, and burial records. Extensive collection, we have new parishes regularly acquired, records either in book form or microfilm, microfiche or CD. Scottish Will Group is willing to buy any OPR films not yet in its collection. The library contains fact sheets detailing, detailing coverage of baptisms, marriages and deaths that survive for each parish. So that's some of our Scottish there. And with our convict connections in colonial Australia, not all of those living in Australia in the early 1800s were convicts. I'm sure you're well aware of that. But our ancestor records survived for free settlers, soldiers, and those born here in Australia, two convicts. Uh, extensive resources, help available relating to colonial New South Wales, interest group building up resources on other penal settlements, Moreton Bay, and early settlers in Tasmania. So that's their project that they're looking more in. And they were found themselves very busy out at the expo with their display. Writing your family history. Deary me. Oops, went one too far. Does it go backwards? Do I wait? Where am I looking? Sorry. My apologies. Um, over there, I can't see with my glasses on. I have to take them off. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, this interest group only began late last year, and the membership numbers are growing. As I said, it's becoming the thing these days. Writing exercise, five minutes. Discussion, feedback on material written by a member is circulated in advance. This is like a typical program for the da that session. Topic for discussion or a guest speaker. So like writing and style, format, structure, from ideas to words on the page, publishing the finished work. Writing competition initiated in 2011. Um, the 2011 winner searching for Sam Fu, a Chinese immigrant ancestor. She was an American now living here in Australia and she was looking for this Sam Fu. And after a long time, she found it and she published that and the winning entry was published in Generation and on our website. So we all get involved in each other's happenings over there and I think that's what it is about joining a group. It's like-minded people like yourselves. You come across a little problem, you come along and you discuss it with other people. Hopefully and most likely likely you will find someone that's been doing similar work and knows where to go or how to get back in around from a sideways, you know, think outside the box, as they keep saying, and get you in there. Now, recent in a bit of, I forget it, it's that time of the morning, sorry. Publication of volume two on CD of the muster roll data gathered as part of the Q1 project. As I said earlier, this is nearly completed. 28,000 records we put into the database and verifying and it takes a bit of time just to make sure everything's perfect or as perfect it can be. The annual writing competition updated our website, second place, as I said, in the overseas category for the FFHS UK awards. Free one hour one-on-one -on -one help sessions, assistance that is to provide <coughs> on, um, oops, 
don't worry, assist brother to data on Irish research uh, citation and sources, interpreting and understanding parish records and old handwriting, which is another thing that's very difficult at times to understand. Uh, the old handwriting. Free education ses sessions in Brisbane City Council library system. I think I'm going to Holland Park tomorrow to do one of those. Now there's so much more. Come and join us and see how we can add value to your research. And pursuant to that, I thought I'd share a couple of things that I've found. Now one of the things I spoke earlier about, we have access to some British newspapers. And I did find my juicy bit, because I have no convicts, I'm very depressed about that. All good farmers and hardworking people, but I wanted something a little bit outside. And I'm going through the the uh, newspapers and I put in the surname Penhaligon, and up came this criminal, the couple of them, the sons had been involved and fined five shillings for being drunk or in a brawl or something like that. And they brought somebody up before the magistrate because somebody stole some chickens, etc. But I did find murder and I thought, oh, this is good. And I read down that he'd, in another little village, had sort of accosted a young woman in a bar and um, a brawl ensued and somebody died. And I thought, oh, that good, that's in the newspaper. They're going to have a trial. So how long will the trial take? So I'll jump ahead a few months. Found it. Up there in front of the judge, a young lady stands up in court as a witness and says that Mr Penhaligon had tried to put his arm around this young lady and he has no right to. He's got a wife back in the other village. She's in an asylum, but that doesn't matter, you know. He has no right. And I thought, oh... That's what happened to the second wife. She's in an asylum. So he got off because the fellow who died, the other fellow he was fighting, had a heart condition. A doctor stood up and these days you wouldn't get off. You'd be had, had up for, uh, uh, what would it, um, the manslaughter, that's right. But he got off the murder charge, so there you go. But um, I knew through the census he had a wife, which is the mother of my great-great-grandfather, then 10 years or so later, there's another woman as the wife, and I did find the marriage there, but I could find no death because census later, there's another woman listed in the census as his wife, and I could find nothing there. But it seems as though she finally died, but I still can't find a marriage record for the third one, so they might have just been living together into old age to keep each other company. But... There's so much that you can find in these papers that add something to what happened during those... Oh, uh, previous. previous, I've got it. Sorry. To what's happening. And I heard Sue there so talking about Trove. And Trove's so good. I found a photo to do with um, a great uncle here. He was in the Tramways Rifle Club and they were... Uh, winners of the A-grade midweekly fixtures in 1925. And if you remember the tram, they all had their little hats on, those little capy, capy, is that when it's the white ones? So there he was. And then in another part of the paper here in Brisbane, the Brisbane Courier, I find that he rescued someone from drowning. A prompt and plucky action of a motorman was instrumental in saving the life of a little girl at Breakfast Creek. So I'm sort of adding things to what this person was. I also, I knew he went to the Boer War, but again, another article in the paper about him escorting prisoners in um, there, and he talks about getting a scratch because he was climbing up um, under fire and he hurt his shoulder and made his nose bleed in the fall. But apart from that, he's, you know, not too bad. And he get, at the bottom, he says, give my love to all friends and tell them I'm on the best of health. So he's on a three-day jaunt on a train taking 41 prisoners down to Cape Town. On another note comes World War I. His younger brother, yes, that, that was the eldest brother, my grandma's brothers, these were. He went off to uh, to join and he was an ambulance, uh, part of the ambulance corps there and 
He was reported as having died of wounds, was the youngest son of Mr. Penhaligon Rosedale Farm in Drapilly. It's actually Kenmore, but at that stage it was still part of Indrapilly and our, well, his, not ours, his property was where the Kenmore Tavern and the ambulance stand, all that area in there. And um, he was employed as a uh, by the Commonwealth as a letter carrier and stationed at Indrapilly as assistant mail officer. Um, it goes on to tell you a bit more about his athletic prowess, but um, his father had gone over to um, England just two days before the outbreak of war began between England and Germany, and he arrived over there. And while he was there, he lost a nephew, uh, Mr. Penelligan, Richard Penelligan, he went down in a submarine and he met with fatal, and another one met with fatal wounds, um, three weeks, uh, pneumonia, sorry, he, another one had was wounded and then this chap, a second son of the same, died from pneumonia. And then he landed back in Australia only to find that his son had been killed. He had his legs blown off and ended up on the Gascoigne and died on board. And there is a recount of his diary. My great-great-grandfather allowed his diary for the three months before he died on the 15th of May, um, uh, yeah, of, um, April, uh, 15th of May, sorry, um, 1915. And uh, we, I have seen his diary, but this is released to the courier at that stage to print. And um, also, I found out, looking through Trove again for the Brisbane, I think I got this here at the library before it went online, about, I knew he had prized Jersey cows, but when I started looking through on the exhibition, the natural, the National Agricultural and Industrial Association, it was known as, this is back in 1888, he had also prized pigs and Muscovy ducks, as well as his cows and his horses and all the rest of it. And um, in this 1888, the prize for the best aged boar was awarded to Mr. Penhaligon for a boar 18 months old, competing against Grazier's exhibit two-year-old and a four-year-old boar shown by Mr. Goggs, etc., etc. But I also found about, if you know Indrapilly at all, Lambert Road and that, um, Mr. Lambert, he appears in this with, um, I think that's the wine one. Just a moment. I didn't know wine was grown at Indrapilly, but there you go. Uh, Mr. Lambert Indrapilly obtained first place among Queensland competitors only with his Vidello uh, and second in the same class with his White Hermitage. He also obtained the second prize in the red wine of Burgundy types. The character of the wine exhibited taken as a whole were well up to the average of Queensland vineyards. Some mulberry and pineapple wines shown by Mary Tucker of Cooperoo were highly commended. And it talks all about, the, you know, the sowing, etc. So there's plenty out there, plenty to see, but don't just look down birth, deaths and marriages and census. Newspapers, and as I say, we have some access through to help you. And we're having an open day, I'll just plug that a bit so there's a flyer out there next month if you want to come along. It's the uh, blue one out there. And we're having a, a more uh, a seminar in August. Is that August? Yes, yeah, 25th of August at the Queen Alexandra, that you can pick a flyer up there that you might transport. Who knows what you might find along the way there. But I think it's time for me to leave you now.